Hi, this is Nancy with On Point's Tutorials, Tips, and Tours. The West Michigan Quilters Guild holds a biannual show called The Quilts on the Grand, and it's held October 2016. This year, we had the vendors do the demos, and On Point came to record the demos. This next demo you're going to see is from my friend Mary Smulligan. She owns a quilt shop called Custom Quilts Unlimited in Fenville, Michigan. Mary's demo is all about machine applique, and she's using some really pretty designs from Laundry Basket Quilts. Hello ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm here to show you and tell you a little bit about free motion machine applique and the perfect blanket stitch. Now the industry has really gone to pre-cuts and those are where you buy the, your packages of silhouette pieces or your applique pieces and they come all pre-cut with fusible on it and a lot of times they come with a background fabric okay and how many people have done machine applique okay all right now I'm going to go over a few of the basics with machine applique just in case you don't know this now as long as you have a machine that has a blanket stitch um, button on your machine um, when you push that It'll automatically set your, your stitch length and your, and your stitch um, width. You can always change that. You can dial it down or dial it up depending on how, how wide you want your um, blanket stitch and how far apart you want your pieces. Okay? So um, does everybody know that, that that's on their machine and they can do that with all the stitches? That's great because some people don't know that and they wonder why I get such a fine... Um, blanket stitch and it's just because I dialed it down. All of this pre-cuts that we sell are all on batiks, okay? And did you know batiks don't fray? So we do the raw edge machine applique. So then you, if you would like the satin stitch, where you're, which is just a glorified zigzag really, where it's real close together, um, that's more or less for, fa for regular fabric that's going to fray. But when you're doing batiks, you can get away with a pretty big blanket stitch because that fabric's not going to fray up once it's washed, okay? But I still like to do a fine, fine blanket stitch, a small one. But when we get into some of these pieces on here, some of these small, intricate pieces are very um, thin, narrow, small pieces. I don't know if you can see this little stem right here. So this stem is so small. If I tried to do a blanket stitch on that, it's, all you're going to see is thread. You're going to lose the fabric. So what I do is free motion machine applique. And that's where I put in my quilting darning foot. And I sew about a quarter inch away from all of the edges. Can you see the difference between the blanket stitch and the, the machine applique stitch? I mean the free motion machine applique stitch like on this butterfly here. Instead of quilting it, I'm appliquing it. Now you can also quilt it at the same time as applique. I don't do that because I like the wool batting. What it does is it gives it more of a three-dimensional look. See how it kind of sticks out? You can see the quilting a little bit better with the wool, but it gives it a puffier look. Some people call it um, terpunto. They says, oh, that's terpunto. No, it is not. It is just a 100% a, a wool washable batting by Hobbs. Okay? It's one of the best wool products on the market. Um, it's really all I use now for quilting. But the other important thing with machine applique is you need to have a stabilizer behind it. And I like this 100% cotton fusible. It has a sticky side. Can you see? It's kind of shiny on that side and it's dull on this. This is 100% cotton fusible and if you put that on the back of your applique, it's going to give your, your stitches something to grab. Okay, so um, anytime I do machine applique, whether it's with the blanket stitch or the um, free motion applique, I always use the stabilizer. Okay, um, it's, have you ever done machine applique with the blanket stitch and it keeps like puckering your fabric? 
as you go. When that happens, that, that's because you didn't have enough fabric for it to grip. So that's why we do this fusible. So I won't use anything else but this 100% cotton fusible. And we do sell it at our shop and at our booth. So then, once I have all my applique done, I'm going to layer it with the batting. And now I'm going to quilt kind of heavily on the background to make all of this pop out like that does. Okay? If you machine applique and quilt at the same time, you're not going to get that puffy look. Okay? So I like to do all my applique before I layer my, my sandwich. So to do a um, free motion machine applique, you do need a quilting darning foot, okay? An open-toed one is the best when you're doing this. So you would change over from your um, open-toed foot when you're doing um, applique. So let me sh see if I can show you this. This little foot here is an open-toed applique foot, then let you see where you're going, okay? Um, that, I think that's very important. If when you're trying to do applique and you can't see where you're going, it's a problem. So get an open-toed foot, but to do the free motion machine applique, we're going to change this, this um, foot here to a quilting darning foot. But instead of quilting, we're going to do free motion machine applique which makes it very fast, okay, very fast. Um, we're going to change it over to a straight stitch, okay. Stitch length doesn't matter because we have a quilting darning foot, okay. So it doesn't matter what's your stitch length at when you're doing free motion, even quilting or, or applique. So let's take one of these little circles because circles are hard to do with the, um, with the blanket stitch. And I'm just going to sew close to the edge on here. And it doesn't matter if it's far away. You know, as long as it's about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, you'll be fine. I'm going to pass some of this stuff around so you can see it. Um, I, have, I have a blanket stitch on here, which is two different sizes. And then I just did a free motion machine applique here. And when you get these little bird's nests, do you get these when you start with your free motion machine quilting? I just cut those off, but if you hold your bobbin thread and your top thread and pull your bobbin thread up, you won't have that, but I just cut them off. So Nancy's going to show this around a little bit, and you can take this one too, Nancy, if you'd like. And then that way you'll see the difference and see the finished product. So. The main thing with when you're doing your blanket stitch and you keep skipping stitches, okay, when it skips stitches and it doesn't look nice, and you'll probably find some of that on there, what I like to do is take the silicone spray, which is for sewing, okay, um, some of my tips are on the can, and what it does is you spray your fingers with this and rub your needle. That's going to take all the gum and the glue off from your fusibles, which are those are the fusibles they say do not gum up, <laughs> and they do. So we're going to take that rubber needle that's going to take all the glue off. It's going to keep it from building up. Now our stitches aren't going to skip as much. And if you still have problems, it is the bigger the needle, the better for machine applique. If you have too small of a needle, it's going to keep skipping on your blanket stitches. So I like to piece with the size 9 needle, which is very small, but I do applique with a 12. Okay, I've tried it with a 9 and it skips too much. It's just too small of a needle. So anytime your machine is skipping stitches, and this doesn't matter whether you're quilting, piecing, or whatever, try bumping up to a larger size needle. I use a 12 for um, applique and I piece with a 9 and I quilt with a 14. So. Um, it, just try changing your needle size. It, you wouldn't believe the difference that a, a different size needle would make. The other thing with machine applique is I never strive for perfect, I strive for finished. Okay? Um, I'm probably not perfect at anything in life, 
So I don't think that I'll be perfect at machine quilting or machine applique or piecing either, but that don't stop me. I've, I do them the best I can and then move on. If I make mistakes with the machine applique, I will take it out. With machine quilting, I don't. Once it's machine quilted, it's in, it's in, and I move on. But um, I never strive for perfect, I just strive for finished. And I know a lot of you people do like your, your hand applique with your needle turn. Um, laundry basket quilt does make a snippet. And what a snippet is, it's these shapes cut just a little bigger with no fusible on them. So now you can needle turn too. And she has about four different packs that are um, snippets. So for those of you that still want to do the machine, um, the hand applique, you still can use her products, okay? Um, Adita Sitar is the designer of these quilts um, from Laundry Basket Quilts. She is actually from Poland, but she lived in Michigan for about 20 years. She just moved to California, so we miss her dearly. But she's a wonderful lady, and don't be afraid of machine applique. It's very fast and easy. These little ones that I'm um, passing around, they're $30, your background fabric and your pre-cuts, and you can probably get one of these done in four to six hours. That's completely with binding and everything. And they also make wonderful gifts, okay? She has about 250 patterns, and we have silhouettes for 75% of them, okay? So um, don't be afraid of machine applique. It works very well. Um, just, a, just go ahead and just do it. Don't worry about being perfect, ladies, okay? And don't be afraid of those pre-cuts. They're very, they're very fun. So uh, thank you for joining me today, and I hope you all enjoy the show. I hope you try that technique from Mary. Using those pre-cut applique designs makes a project really easy. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We wouldn't want you to miss a single show. Please share us with your friends and leave a comment. We would really love to hear from you.